Picture this. At the center of Project CyberSyn for cybernetic synergy was the operations room, making sound decisions about the economy. It used up and down arrows, real-time feed of factory data from around the country. The National Telecom fed information in to the central source. This is a tape control seven axis. It keeps an eye on every operation. The country was chilly and it was being managed by Stafford Beer, a prominent UK cybernetician. Now, the story that I want to tell you uh, began in uh, 1971, and then I suddenly got a letter which very much changed my life. It was from the technical general manager of the State Planning Board of Chile. President Allende was in office. He had studied all my works, he had collected a team of scientists together, and would I please come and take it over? And then I went into the business of controlling the state, both society and the economy. Because, after all, the government is about controlling society. But Chile, at that time, was very much about the control of the economy. Absolutely accurate data on man hours, cost hours, product rejects, just everything. It was a hexagonal space, 33 feet in diameter, accommodating seven white fiberglass swivel chairs, with orange cushions and on the walls futuristic screens. It was straight out of the bridge in Star Trek. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Bailey. We must become a democracy. One armrest had an arm tray and a drink holder. And the other featured rows of buttons for navigating the screens. In addition to a data feed, there was a live simulation of the projected future state of the economy under various conditions. Quotas, prices, production, and an entire wall for Project Cyberfold, an extension of the cybernetics, and an ambitious effort to track the real-time happiness of the entire Chilean nation. Every living room would have a built-in device and a voltmeter-like dial where they could indicate their moods ranging from extreme unhappiness to complete bliss. These devices would connect to a network, riding on the existing TV networks, and estimate the total national happiness at any moment in time. It was called the Algedonic Meter, based around the Greek words for pain and pleasure. All society would need to be placated would be blissful. It was straight out of Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. And then to close the loop, you see that word Algedonic Meters. I don't think that I had time in the last program to tell you about algedonics. Algedonics means pleasure and pain. And really, the intention of that loop, that we had to get a response from the people to everything we were doing, and we made some very profound plans uh, to achieve that. In reality, Chile had little money for computers, and they used old telex machines to fax information to the 3,000-mile chain of the country of Chile for cybernetics inside the capital. Stafford Beer's cybernetics control room would be put to the test when a trucking and shipment strike threatened to shut down the distribution of goods within Chile. Putting his vast network of telex machines to work across the country, Beer successfully negotiated alternative means of distribution and circumvented the strike. And so I said to him, let us suppose that these elements of the state are the big departments of state, like the foreign affairs and the economy, then a system three and a system four, and I got that far. And then I got to system five, and I said, I was going to say, this compañero presidente is you. He suddenly smiled very broadly, and he said, ah, System 5, at last, the people. That was a pretty uh, powerful uh, thing to happen. It had a very big influence on me. Stafford Beer's intentions in running cybernetics for Allende were sincere enough. Now, I have been very much blamed for doing this. I have been told that uh, I centralized power for Dr. Allende. And I resent the blame I've had very much. But there was also a double game afoot. Stafford Beer's CyberSign network was run on the back of the phone company lines owned by the American IT&T company. Here we have it, the whole 3,000 miles. All coming to 
a telephone switchboard on a daily basis, all this information, going here to the cybernetic network center, which can handle these data, using, of course, a computer. Chile's phone company was majority owned by the US corporation ITT. It spearheaded attempts to stop Allende becoming president. Closely affiliated with the CIA and the coup to destabilize Allende. According to societies as viable systems, in 1973, it was the CIA who had persuaded the Grimios to strike and thus bring to a standstill the vast majority of the transportation system across Chile. For Stafford Beer, the CIA instigated truck strike was a war game opportunity to test his capabilities. The response to the Grimio strike demonstrated the power of the cyber science experiment and essentially validated what Beer was doing up until that point in secret. The important thing to realize about systems is how they are controlled. And we must get rid of any notion straight away that control is something imposed on the system from outside. It has to be built into it. The headlines were true. A computer was now running Chile. This vast social experiment had proved a success for cybernetics and shown how even a single computer could manipulate the strings of the entire system. Uh, they all went to one computer because we only had one computer. If he was successful enough, if they refine this in the future, it's supposed to tend to everyone's needs and even keep them in a mostly blissful, fairly happy state. But that same state that they've shown in Logan's Run and Brave New World, it's pretty clear that something has been sucked out of us. Uh, we've been dumbed down and, and they've gone after our souls. And for every bit of pleasure or economic status or tending to our bare needs administered through a computer, our lives become less human and we become part of a Borg system, a big hive mind, managed by a computer. What kind of future is that? Intelligence. There's no such thing as the unknown. Only things temporarily hidden, temporarily not understood. It's capable of understanding. Is advanced enough to eventually understand our motives. And although it sounds good at first, this kind of collectivist socialism pretty much ends up in people being little more than serfs in a neo-feudal system. And that's what Carol Quigley talked about in Tragedy and Hope. In the 20th century, the expert will replace the industrial tycoon, run the economic system, replace the democratic voter, and the main framework, the operational forces, and the technology itself, even politicians, couldn't truly sway much policy on their own. The little guy, quote, his freedom and choice will be controlled within very narrow alternatives by the fact that he will be numbered from birth and followed as a number through his educational training, his tax contributions, his health, and final retirement and death benefits. Life as a number, managed by a computer. I hope you remember all about the cybernetic model of the viable system. It's a computer. I take that. Kill it.